Hello my dear students. So today we will be discussing something new related to our chapter. We had already started our chapter that is theory of consumer behavior. In the last class we had already discussed about the preferences that is about the monotonic preference and previously we had already discussed about the budget line. So in this class we will be talking about something new and which is very important for you and that is about our indifference curve. So I told you we had already discussed about the bundles isn't it the bundle set and we know that the consumer always prefers the bundle which is having something more than the other or not less than the previous one. Okay, so this is the case of a consumer and when we talk about the preferences, we know that the consumer prefers the bundle which is more important for him or the one which gives him more satisfaction. Okay, so relating all these things, we will be discussing about our indifference curve. Now, first of all, what is this indifference curve? From the name itself, it is there indifference. So first of all, we'll be seeing about what is an indifference curve. So an indifference curve, it's a curve which represents all those combinations of two commodities. When we talked about the bundles, we have taken the assumption, isn't it? That is, we have taken only two goods, good one and good two. That's our assumption, isn't it? That we have taken only two goods. That is only for our reference or making the study more easier. So here we can see that we have taken two combinations. So an indifference curve is a curve which represents all these combinations of two commodities which give same level of satisfaction to a consumer. Okay. And each point on this indifference curve, it represents the same level of satisfaction. So any point we can take, we will be seeing that it will be giving the same level of satisfaction. Okay. So here we are having some important properties of this indifference curve. And what are these important properties when we talk about the indifference curve? Yes. The first one is the indifference curve, it slopes downward, okay, it slopes downward, it's downward sloping. The second one is it is convex to the origin, I'll show you the diagram that will make you clear. So the second point it is convex to the origin. The third one is that which we should keep in mind that the two indifference curve can never intersect. The two indifference curves, they never intersect each other. The fourth one is it never touches any axis. Any axis means we are having two axes, the x and the y axis. So it will be not touching any two axis. And the last one is higher indifference curves shows higher satisfaction level. That means as we are having higher level of satisfaction, there will be also change in the indifference curve. So these are the important properties related to our indifference curve. So we saw what is an indifference curve and the next one is the properties of indifference curve and in case of this properties you have to keep all these things in mind because for your exams when they may be asking you about uh, this uh, what happens when two in will the two indifference curve intersect yes true or false okay so you may be getting objective type questions related to that so be very careful with the properties of indifference curve now coming to the next one that is the indifference curve so i told you the first thing so this is an indifference curve okay it slopes downward that is the first thing that we told so we are having we take two commodities that is commodity x and commodity y or you can say good one and good two then we have taken different different units over here and by joining these points we know we get this curve okay and this is our indifference curve which slopes downward the second thing which i told you is that this indifference curve they don't intersect just see over there if they intersect it will be giving some 
invalid thing okay so we don't go for that and the next thing that we told is that a higher indifference curve that means when the curve is moving from this to this we can give, see that it will be giving a higher level of satisfaction okay so just see this indifference curve for example if you prefer okay 50 units of commodity x then 50 units of commodity x is preferred then we can see that approximately near about 40 units near to approximately 40 units of good y will be preferred okay now if you want more of commodity y that means for example if you prefer 80 units of commodity y then what will be happening more of commodity x that means you will have to give away some units of commodity x to get more units of commodity y so for example if you are taking a want 80 units of commodity y means you will be only getting approximately 20 units of commodity x that means you have to give the rest of the units okay so this is the thing that we told that means if we want more of one commodity we will have to give away the other commodity okay and so this is a indifference curve now this is downward sloping you know the reason for that more of this means less of this more of good x means less of good y so we can see that the curve is downward sloping next let me tell you one more thing the individual is indifferent okay indifferent between all combinations of x and y along the curve he is indifferent 80 units of commodity y means 20 unit of commodity x 40 units of commodity y means uh, near about 50 units of commodity x so he is indifferent uh, indifferent between all combinations of x and y along the curve okay now the next important thing that we have to keep in mind is that a level of utility what is associated with this indifference curve yes a level of utility is associated with each indifference curve a level of utility that we uh, get that is what is associated with our indifference curve okay the next point any combinations okay all combinations of x and y which is above this curve any combinations above this curve what will be happening are preferable to combinations along or below the curve that means if we move above this curve we are preferring something more more of commodity x and more of commodity y so rather than preferring this we will be preferring the other curve okay now the next thing all combinations of x and y below the curve below this point below this curve what are what is happening they are inferior to those combinations or or above the curve that means when the curve comes down it shows that we are preferring something less than this okay that means something it is inferior so that is what i told a higher level of indifference curve shows a higher level of satisfaction okay so this is all related to our indifference curve and that is what i told it is downward sloping convex to the origin it does not intersect okay it's something wrong when we go to that okay uh, and the next one is a higher level of indifference curve shows a higher level of satisfaction so this is the basic thing related to our in difference curve and in this we are having something a small important topic that is the marginal rate of substitution we have already discussed about what is substitution substituting one good for another isn't it substituting one good for another if i don't if the price of tea increases i'll substitute it for coffee because tea and coffee they are substitute so here we'll be talking about what is this marginal rate of substitution and how it is related to our indifference curve so mrs or marginal rate of substitution it refers to the rate at which the consumer substitute one good to obtain one more unit of 
other goods. So that is what we call as the marginal rate of substitution. And when we talk about our marginal rate of substitution, we can see that the slope of the indifference curve, the slope which I told you, it's uh, the marginal rate of substitution and it is uh, calculation is done by delta y by delta x. That means change in commodity y by change in commodity x. That is what we call by delta x by delta y. The MRS is never constant and it varies over the indifference curve. And I told you one more thing that is the indifference curve slopes downward. Okay. That means as we go on consuming more and more, what happens? Our satisfaction, the utility starts decreasing. So here we can see the next one. As we move along the indifference curve, the MRS or the marginal rate of substitutions falls. Also, which we call it as the diminishing marginal rate of substitution. We talked about the law of diminishing marginal utility, isn't it? Same way, here also we can see that the marginal rate of substitution which it starts falling and we call it as the diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Okay, so this is all about our indifference curve analysis, the introduction to our indifference curve analysis and the marginal rate of substitution. In case of our indifference curve, when more and more numbers of indifference curves are shown in a particular figure, we call it as a indifference map. Okay, that means a family of indifference curve, we call it as an indifference map. So, in the next class, we will be discussing more about the marginal rate of substitution. That's all. Thank you.